drag, my goodness gracious, that'd be a drag, wouldn't it? But don't use what you don't need. You know what I mean? You, know, you walk out of the room, you leave the stereo on, the television's on, three lights are on. We come back two hours later. Well, that's done, right? That, that didn't do any good for anybody. When you go to bed at night, you don't have to leave your computer on standby, your television on standby, or whatever. You don't, it's not doing any good for anybody. It's just heating up the planet and wasting your money. So use what you need. And so um, turn off lights, turn off the radio, TV, and not in rooms. All common sense. Water use. So what are we using water? Trail Magic, we use 3,500 3, gallons. Standard two-person house uses 51,000 gallons. Hot water. We use 3,000 standard geezer couple. That is, we're over 60, don't have any dependent kids around, and we have a lot of guests, but you know we try to keep them to keep their showers short. Um, 8,000 gallons. So how do we do this? Low flow faucets, shower head, dual flush toilets, water efficient dishwasher, clothes washer. All these things are easy to do. Behavior, use what you need. Now, if you go take a 30-minute shower, it's a waste of money. It's a waste of your time. First off, who has an extra, all that extra time to take a shower? You don't have extra time to take a shower if you're really doing what you need to do. And you don't need to waste all that water. And the other thing, you know, I bet you most of you people turn on the shower and you get wet and you try to put soap on with the shower running. You know, that is kind of, that's just silly. You know, when you put soap on, the shower's running, the water washes it off. Now you're using more soap than you need, and it's taking more time to get the soap on there, right? So you turn the water on, you get wet, right? Turn the shower off, you're nice and wet. You put that soap on, it stays right there. Get that all over the body, right? Turn the shower on, get that off, right? You're clean. That's the function of the shower, right? At least you don't want to go around smelling bad. I don't know if you're good. And you're done. It takes about three minutes. Well, you know if you're going to, going to, going to chill out a little, maybe four or five minutes. You don't need any more time than that. Otherwise, you're just waiting. So behavior, use what you need, not what is wasteful. So uh, that's what we do, and that's how we get those numbers. So heat stove, we heat with wood. We use one quart of wood. That heats the house um, all winter. Hardwood, and you know, we're old. so. I mean, we used to be like some of our friends now, you know, 60 degrees was pretty warm in the house, you know, keep it down to 50 and I, but I don't, I'm not for that anymore. I've gotten sloppy and really, so we keep it at 70, uh, pretty much 65 to 75, and at night we let it down, you know, average of 65, maybe it gets down to 62 or 63 at night sometimes. Um, and you'll see that we, we, we mostly don't need anything because the sun provides all of our heat. We have a passive solar house. So we do have the wood stove when it's cloudy, and unfortunately, over when it's cloudy a lot. When the sun's out, we don't need anything. And I'll show you a number, a number on that in a moment. So here's passive solar heating. This is looking at our, our essentially our room where everything happens. That's where the wood stove is. The piano's there, so that's the entertainment. We bring out a television we want. That's we have our dining space there. We have parties there. It's not very big. Functional space of essentially about 17 feet by 13 feet. But it works anywhere up to 8, 9, 10 people. It gets bigger than that, you get closer. You know, that's okay. In the winter, you stay warmer. Um, so we get from the sun free 15 million BTUs of heating at least. Uh, it's hard to get that number, but that's the best. And so here's the kind of thing like I so said, why we don't need, even in a cold climate like Ohio, it gets cold like here some of the times. Here was a day year ago, blue sky, full sun, snow on the ground. At 10 a.m. it was minus 10 degrees outside. That's pretty, that's warm for here, right? So you've gotten used to that. That's pretty cold for us anyway. So minus 10, the ins on the outside, inside temperature was 62. We had had no heat on all night, right? The wood stove had gone out because yesterday it had been sunny. So the house had gotten warm and it got cooled down to 62. Well, we, and, then, and so I said, this is a perfect day for a little experiment. So I didn't, didn't I, I knew the sun was going to come out. So no internal heat, 2 p.m., that is four hours later, zero degrees outside still, and it was 68 in the house. 
So with just passive design and a, and, and a high performance envelope, that is a tight envelope, well insulated, we not only took care of all the heat loss out of the house, but we had a heat gain of six degrees uh, in air temperature. So uh, passive works, and, it, and if you have a sunny climate, which I don't know, you're probably sunnier than we are, but it really works. Snow cover actually helps, gives you about 50% more uh, uh, energy in from, from reflected light, which is pretty unbelievable. And it turns out we've done lots of other experiments. We can have a totally cloudy day, and in the, in the hours between about 10 and 2, there's enough reflection, no direct sunlight, reflecting off the snow that we don't, that the temperature stays constant in the house. Um, so we can heat. We do heat with the sun, which comes all the time, and the wood stove when we need it, but we can do it with our heat pump. So we built a Cadillac house with all kinds of things in it because we had the resources to do that. We did an experiment. So how much would it take to cool this house? Well, we ran an experiment, a <clears throat> seven-day experiment. In order to keep the house at 75 degrees, in terms of this is the summertime, uh, for five days, the temperatures outside were in the mid-80s to the low-90s, and we use no passive cooling. We have a number of techniques for passive cooling, so mostly we don't ever need any air conditioning, even when it's hot like that. It would cost us per year, take 910 kilowatt hours, 10 cents, it would cost $91 to cool our house all the time when it needed for a whole summer, with, with, and locked up like a little cocoon, keeping it at, six, at uh, 75. Heating. Ran an experiment will cost us 210 kilowatt hours or $210 and to keep the temperature at 68 all the time, night and day. You, know, you just can't mess around. It's too complicated doing these experiments. You've got to pick a temperature and keep it. We had a nine-day experiment. It turns out that six days were 100% cloudy, and the other days had a few little bits of sunshine peeking through. So that was essentially no passive heating. So, you can heat and cool this house, and I and climate not greatly different from here for three hundred dollars, whole year. But basically, we don't do any of that because we don't need to, uh, and um, so. But it's there if we want to. So lighting. So this is what the house. Those images aren't so great here. So you want to walk that on there. It's just not anywhere near as dark as that. It's not projected well. And also, when you have bright light shining, you can see that there's snow on the ground there. Bright light shining in, the eye, you know, and the camera. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can read anywhere almost in the house during the day, even on a cloudy day. You get so much light in there. So lighting um, is essentially uh, with sunshine. And from sunset to sunset, you can read in almost every room of the house except those rooms that have no windows in them, like the mechanical room. Uh, in the end of the workshop. And our energy usage for lighting is 100 kilowatt hours for the year. And if you want to compare that, well, that's what we have. We can turn on all the lights in our house. We only have 500 watts. And it's a combination of compact fluorescence and uh, we have one incandescent bulb. We're going to get rid of it when leads cut, uh, LED light emitting diodes. But this is a really funky feature. It's the only it's one of our upscale things. It's got a lot of wires in it. We've got this little incandescent wire that goes in there. The light comes out. The wires all sparkle. It really looks cool. So we don't like that very much. But you know, a little bit for aesthetic beauty, and, and we like that. But anyway, we'll get an LED that will go in there. It'll be about two watts when they make them, and they'll do the same thing. Right now it's 37 watts, it's just sinful light. But anyway, that total amount, the average two-person house in the U.S. is 2,800 kilowatt hours for lighting. So we get five million BTUs from lighting. Passive, free nuclear lighting all in design, which essentially costs nothing. So trail magic is, a, is, a, is an energy positive. That is, we make more energy than we use from on-site sunshine, and we're climate positive. We use no fossil fuels. And so there's, there's, there's the dryer right there. See the dryer? Close line. Fact is, we...